Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hey guys, and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. It's Wednesday. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, you may hear some thunder in the background every so often. It's Florida, it's summertime, and this is when the storms roll in. So I just heard a loud, <laughs> right before we went live, I just heard a loud bang. So you guys might hear it. Nothing I could do about that. Um, I'm excited for today's show. I have metaphysical practitioner, Bonnie D'Angelo on, and she's going to join me in just a few minutes, and we're going to be talking all things magical. I just want to give a big shout out to all my regulars who listen to me each week. Thank you so much for coming back, and um, I love it, and I hope you, you know, you keep coming back. And if you're new to my show and you're here for the first time, welcome. Thank you for being here with me, and I hope that you will be become a regular listener, uh, just FYI for future shows, just so everybody knows. If you miss a show live, you can always find it on replay and listen to it anytime you like, and the shows go across all the podcasting um, you know, venues. There's a million of them now. So yeah, you can always listen to the show. So a little bit about me, though, if you are new, um, I'm an artist and I'm also a photographer and an author. And I have a book and it's titled Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams. And in my book, I share people's manifesting stories with photographs that I took alongside of their manifesting postcards. And a manifesting postcard is kind of like a little mini vision board for those who have never heard that before. So in my book, I have 30 of those manifesting stories along with the photos that I took of the postcards. And it's really cool to see how people have um, manifested in their real life the things that they put on their postcard. So please check it out. I also include a bunch of writing exercises and it helps us get really clear on the things that we want to manifest. And there's also just some fun exercises on how to bring in more abundance in the areas of love and money and health and career. So yeah, you can look all that when you get my book. So to find the book, you just have to go to your favorite online bookstore or you could go to your bookstore in your neighborhood and they'll get you the book if it's not in stock for sure, no problem. So please check it out. I was really excited to write it and get it published in uh, my second book, First Draft is Done. I have no idea when that's gonna be published but I will let you guys know. So please check it out. Also, uh, I ask every week, uh, for those of you listening, to send me a manifesting postcard. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you go to my website, postcardstotheuniverse.com, it shows you how to create one and the address to send it. Just shoot me an email and let me know that you're sending me one over so I can look out for it. If you love Facebook, I have a public group. It's called Postcards of Love, and you can join, and we just share funny and uplifting posts. So, yeah, like... You know, there's still some of us that like Facebook. I know everybody's done in, on Instagram and now TikTok. I'm on there too, but you know, I still love my Facebook. So come over and join me. Um, last week I announced that I'm gonna be doing a workshop and I am doing the workshop. The date is tentative around July 13th. I'm not quite sure yet. So as soon as that is set in stone, I'll let you guys know. But it's called Manifesting Through Gratitude, A Visual Journey. And in the course, we're going to be covering living in gratitude, using writing exercises, and doing a daily visual gratitude practice with our camera phones to help us get into alignment with the energy of abundance. So each week, we're going to focus on a different area of our life to be grateful for. Uh, worthiness and self-love. We're going to start there, then we're going to go to health and wellness, and then financial abundance, and then to relationships. And so I'm going to teach everybody how to make a, um, 
a visual gratitude journal. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm really excited about that and I'll give you all the details when, like I said, it is set in stone. Uh, each week I do share a magical message that I like to post on social media and it's an image of a manifesting postcard that I will photograph or I'll find a quote or something that has an affirmation and I like to focus on that because I think affirmations are super powerful Right, it's almost like spell casting, truthfully. Um, and it becomes a new belief in our life. So this week's magical message is see the magic everywhere. And life is magical. Each and every moment of our life is special and unique. And all we need to do is look around us. And we forget to do that. So I think we need to look more carefully. You know, just for example, right now it's raining. Look at the raindrops, hear the thunder and lightning. If you're safe, it's great, right? If you're nice, if you're in your house and you can listen to it, the rhythm of the rain, it's beautiful, it's magical. And if I think if we don't believe in magic, then we're never gonna find it. You know, the greatest secrets are always hidden in the most unlikely spots, the little things um, in everyday life are the greatest treasures of magic if we focus on it and it has the potential to bring much happiness to us. So look around you. The world is full of magic. All we need to do is sharpen our senses so that we can discover, discover the magic. And in the discovery, I think, eventually we will learn to discover ourselves. So that's just my thought about seeing the magic everywhere and I just want to share that with you guys. All right, so to bring out my guest today, Bonnie D'Angelo has opened up to the spiritual world to share what she has learned with others and she's gonna share today with us. She is a yoga and meditation instructor. She reads Tarot and provides mediumship services to those who would like to connect with their loved ones in spirit. Bonnie is currently on track to obtaining her Master's of Metaphysical Sciences degree, and the program has given her additional insight and wisdom, starting her journey as a yoga teacher to further support her own spiritual growth. Yoga practice was a game changer. She shares her wisdom on psychic mediumship, using crystals for energy work, witchcraft rituals, and practices. Bonnie says... I have always been extremely interested in things like crystals, magic, energy, and connecting to past loved ones and all the stuff associated with spirituality. This deep passion for the esoteric has been growing within me for a very long time. I dove in head first and started learning as much as I could about the spiritual world, products, and practices. And if you want to learn more about Bonnie and what she is offering, you got to check out her website. It's called spellboundmystics.com. That's spellboundmystics.com. Welcome, Bonnie. Thanks for being here with me today. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, we're going to talk about magical stuff. <laughs> so, yes, well, what's, what's more exciting? <laughs> what's more exciting? So why don't you yeah. share with everybody listening a little bit about you in, and you said that you've always been interested in stuff like this. And I always have too since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So how did it like, how did this become your work? So, um, gosh, you know, it, it, it was a long time coming. I'm, um, I'm 17 years in Florida and I, I think that was like the turning point for me where I dove in head first. I had some challenges um, and, and through those challenges, just being with friends and being with acquaintances, I heard a, a little something in like out of the corner of, of my ear. Um, somebody said, so-and-so is Wiccan. And I'd never like heard that term before at that point. And mm -hmm. um, I'm like, what is that? And after that word came out, I didn't hear anything else that was said. I know there was other conversations, but I'm like, okay, I got to find out what this is. What is this? So mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, I took it from there and went down the whole rabbit hole of, you know, uh, Wicca, um, paganism, witchcraft, spells, energy, manifesting. Um, and, you know, it all came about. And this came at the perfect time. Like I said, I was going through some struggles. And this allowed me to release and let go and it turned my focus from being sad and angry and miserable and oh what was me to mm. what 
now? What am I doing? What's, what's going on? What is all this stuff? Where does it fit in? Um, so it's kind of like, uh, like a drip effect. So it was like, I, I got into this and then I'm like, I gotta learn this and I gotta learn this. And it was, it just kind of, it just flowed to me kind of like naturally. It wasn't anything that I was forcing. It was like it, little bits were just coming to me and I just soaked it all up. Um, and I, I really dove into um, spells and rituals and learning about all of, all of that and how energy works, how the mind is so powerful um, and our thoughts bring about what we think about. And I did my first, ritual spell and it worked <laughs> I'm like oh right. <laughs> my goodness okay all right okay so so I continued on from there so um fast forward to maybe four years ago mm-hmm. three years ago it was the beginning of COVID I believe where things really got really in depth where I really started to open up and um I just said something in me is is moving me towards this career path. I did some online um, trainings. I worked with mentors. I I spoke to other people who are going through the same thing. um, And it it just kind of blossomed. So um, I quit my job. I was in the, in a corporate position and I just, I, I'm like, this is not for me. I can't do it anymore. And then one day I felt, I felt the energy of, of the crown of my head. And it was tingling. It was burning. It was, it was telling me that this is not good for you to leave. And at that moment, you know, I, I said, I got to follow my intuition here. Mm -hmm. I quit the job and did a total change of, you know, where I was going. So it just, it, it all kind of flowed naturally for me. And it, um, it, it was, um, it was scary. It was, it was fun. It was exciting. And then more scary and more fear <laughs> because you're, you're jumping into something that is sure. like totally different. And I just, I, I said, I'm just going to enjoy the process. Mm. You know, it's mm-hmm. funny because I've been doing the shows now because I was on a different radio. I was doing online radio now. God, it's been, I don't know, four or five years now, right? So I was with somebody else mm-hmm. and then I came over here to Elm Times. So I've talked to pff, probably over a thousand guests now. And mm-hmm. so many of us, it was when we were going through a struggle something happened. There was a struggle, right? And then it's like almost like the universe just kind of went, um, pay attention, pay attention, right? And those of us who were called did pay attention and it completely shifted our lives and opened it up in so many ways. And I kind of feel like that's like our higher self or the angels or spirit or God, it doesn't matter, the universe, whatever you want to call it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the working, it's magic on us. And it's funny when you're talking about your spells because I look at when I'm making a, my own pa- postcard, a manifesting postcard as spell casting. Mm-hmm. For me, that's spell casting work, like when I'm creating it, because I'm putting all my energy into it, right? And when I try to yep. teach people how to make one, that's what I try to emphasize, that you are, you're like spell casting, mm-hmm. you don't even realize you're doing it. And I love the fact that we're talking more openly about this, and it's not about the occult, it's not negative, it's nothing like that. And I think more and more people are becoming open to it. I agree. There, there's definitely a lot of people more open about it, and just being open myself to be able to put that out there with family and friends. I mean, it it took a while for me to, you know, without hiding all of my, you know, my stuff, I get my sage and, you know, my crystals and um, wands or whatever else I'm using. I, you know, I kept it hidden for so long and, Mm -hmm. and just, you know, but it it was like the last like three years, I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm, I'm doing this and this is working for me. It's making me a better person. Did I forget to tell you that I was a people hater for so long? <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be around people. Um, it was just, I don't know if it was probably just draining for me without even mm-hmm. me knowing that yeah. and being able to figure, you know, what's going on. Why do I, why do I want to shelter myself? Um, mm-hmm. So 
this has kind of brought me out of my shell. My true, I feel like my true authentic self has like finally come through. I can speak what I, you know, feel and, and mm-hmm. I hear and I see it. It's just kind of like that, a new me. And it, mm-hmm. it's quite incredible. And you talk about spell casting. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're very, you know, doing a vision board, making a mm-hmm. postcard, like you say, um, even talking to yourself. Um, that's all spell casting and, um, doing spells and rituals. They don't have to be elaborate. They don't have to be an hour long. You don't have to do the whole thing, even just kind of like doing the steps in your mind and talking it out and feeling it. I've done, I've done this many times where, you know, I don't have the energy to go sit down at my altar and do the thing, but I'm going to lie in my bed and I'm going to visualize. I've done that a few times and, with you know great results great mm-hmm. results so yeah we're, we're spell casting at all times um watch the negatives that we're talking to ourselves <laughs> right. that's, that's also spell casting so it, it's quite fascinating right right yeah that's what that's why when i started postcards i wanted to be like a conscious i call it a conscious co-creator with the universe because we are we're always if we're going to use it in terms of spell casting or manifesting we're doing it all the time 24 hours a day we just don't realize we're doing it most of the time we're focused on negatives the negatives the things we don't want and what we're doing is we're calling those things into our life that's what a spell sure. is you're calling things into your life and we want to um, be conscious about what it is that we want in our life and how we want to, you know, be how we want to present ourselves to to the world. So it's important mm-hmm. work. I think more important than, than most people realize. You know, it's really mm-hmm. interesting, and I want to ask you about this because I don't know much about it. Um, I mm-hmm. have tons of crystals, but I know you do crystal work and you use crystal for energy work. And I just collect them. <laughs> like I'll see one, I love it and I'll just grab it. And obviously I'm attracted to it for a reason, but I don't really mm-hmm. know much about crystal work. So share a little bit about how you're, you, yeah, you use for crystals sure. for our energy work. Yes, definitely. So I do Reiki, I do energy work, um, and I will bring crystals in. So how I work with crystals is I relate them to the chakra systems, our energy centers in our body. Are you familiar with mm-hmm. the chakras? Oh, oh so yeah. The, mm-hmm. the seven, we have um, root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Um, so when I'm working in a specific area, I will reach for a crystal that resonates with a specific um, chakra. So let's talk about the sacral chakra. This okay. is our energy. Um, this is our center for passion, our desires, our sensuality and sexuality. So if there's mm-hmm. something that I wanted to work with in any one of those areas, I would reach for an orange crystal. So carnelian, okay. uh, orange calcite, um, those types of stones are going to resonate with the solar plexus because the solar, uh, the, not the solar plexus, the sacral chakra is um, orange in color. That's the color it resonates okay. with. So I grab those crystals and I program it, um, the program, the crystal with my intention. So I'll sit with a crystal in my hand and I'll meditate with it, sit some quiet, mm-hmm. and I will visualize all that energy that I want to bring through all the intentions with the crystal in regards to the specific um, area. And I will insert that and infuse that crystal with the intention. So say I want to um, bring out more of my desires. Mm-hmm. So I would ask the crystal to work with desires um, and, and bring that through, open the chakra. And um, that's exactly what I, I would do with a crystal. And then if at some point moving along during the day where I'm feeling I need, I need something, I, I, what do I need? So I kind of sit in with my body. I feel through the energy centers, through the chakras to see what's going on. And then maybe my heart will start beating a little bit heavy. I'm like, okay, so my, I need to work with my heart chakra a little bit. So I'll reach for something green or a rose quartz um, that correlates with, with the, with that chakra. So that's how I, I work with crystals and yes, they are pretty. And sometimes I just reach Mm -hmm. for a crystal because I'm like, I gotta have it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Do you like sense, do you get a feeling of the energy? Like, are you conscious of it? Like if you pick up a crystal, you could feel the energy from it. Cause I know there are people that do that very easily. I think if I really tried and focused, I could start to practice it. I would become more in tune to it. You know, I just kind of like the way they feel and I play with them and look at them and I just like 
like to have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Total sense. But I do have, so I have a mobile crystal shop that I bring to events and mm-hmm. I've had maybe a handful of people that walk on um, and walk into my shop and they're like, there's too much energy in here. I can't, and they have to leave. Um, but for the most part, we have people that, you know, feel it in a, in a very mild sense, but there's some that are like really sensitive. Um, what yeah. I, um, I can feel some of them, some of them bring that energy. And actually I just, um, I just got a new crystal that, yeah. that has brought this sensation. I, I, every time I touch it and it doesn't matter where I am or what I doing, I have goosebumps and, and, and tingly feelings yeah. all the way up my leg. So that's the first time it's really happened in that sense. Um, But like you said, tuning in is the Mm -hmm. major um, game changer here is being able to um, silence the mind, tune into the body, the breath, um, and just notice. And Mm -hmm. doing that on a daily basis is going to bring awareness um, a little bit more clearer. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. So, yeah. is there a crystal that you could recommend for anybody who's living, uh, listening? Like, um, maybe one that they can keep with them, like one for protection, or one that is like calming. You know, the the mm-hmm. planet's crazy. You know, the energy's crazy. It's twenty four hours a day with social media. Things are bombarded you know, Mm -hmm. our way all the time. So it's like a little bit of sensory overload. So is there like a good crystal that just is a very nice calming and grounding effect that would be good to carry around on a regular basis? Yeah, there's a couple. um, The first one that comes to mind is the tourmaline. Tourmaline is your basic um, grounding stone. So that's going to bring in some grounding um, energy and some protection energy. So that's a great one to have. And um, I would pair that if you're looking for some calming energy, any Mm -hmm. crystal that is blue, um, Mm -hmm. so the light baby blues, um, Mm -hmm. Larimar, um, blue quartz, um, there's there's a there's a bunch of different blue ones that that will okay. bring in that calming energy angel light um yeah there's yeah. if you just any blue one if you're in a in a store and you're looking for something calming go to the blue um okay. blue section <laughs> go to um, the blue lace <laughs> yeah blue lace agate um mm-hmm. those ones are definitely good for calming energy and i would always throw in also a rose quartz because that's mm-hmm. Um, bringing your awareness to um, to your to yourself and, and um, the love that you you share, the love that you accept, the love that you give. So it's um, mm. those three are are the ones I would recommend for for those types of things for sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Yeah. I have, Yeah. I definitely know I have rose quartz. I know I have some blue stones. I have to just see what they are. Do you have a favorite yeah. that you, or you have a go-to stone that you like to keep with you or? Um, I love clear quartz. I will mm-hmm. always have clear quartz. Like I have one, two, three, four, five clear quartz crystals around my desk. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like those are just great um, to have around because they have um, clear energy. Um, I, the crystal that I just picked up in a, Mm. and um, felt that incredible energy is my favorite stone right now. It's carborundum. Mm, Uh, I never heard of that one. Never heard that. Yeah. And I hadn't, I hadn't either. There's so many out there that I haven't heard of yet, but this one um, carborundum, it's the master healer stone. So it works with um, nature. It's magical. It's, sparkly. Mm. It's, um, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous piece and it aligns all the chakras. Mm. And what's that called again for those? Cause I know a lot of people probably mm. never heard of it. What's it called? Carborundum. Carborundum. Oh, car- carborundum. I'll have to look that one yeah. up after the show. Yeah. Carborundum. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. I'm fascinated. I recently got a book, um, that uses, it tells you how to use certain crystals for certain magical work and spells mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah. It, Cause like I said, I have tons. I just don't, I don't know them very well. It's that would be a new learning thing for me. Um, yeah. I know that you talk about, uh, you're very big on yoga and then even in your bio, mm-hmm. you, bio, you said yoga is a game changer. Um, so mm-hmm. what did you mean by that? That yoga was a game changer. 
Um, so you mentioned how we're, we're so busy. We're on mm-hmm. social media. We, we do all this stuff with computers, you know, this, that, you know, always thinking ahead what needs to be done. Yoga for me brings me to my quiet place. So, um, and I talked about this kind of like noticing and settling in and quieting the mind. That's what yoga does for me. I, I can go through a practice. I, I can sense where my body is feeling all the movements, what muscles are being used. I can feel, um, you know, this area is a little tender. This area feels open. Um, Mm -hmm. my heart's beating when I do this, my breath. Um, Mm -hmm. quickens when this, when I'm doing this, um, movement. Um, and then after, after the, um, the class, it's, it's a time Mm -hmm. to just lay still. And it's a time where you're quiet and you're just listening and feeling and sensing everything in the body. Um, some yoga classes have yoga nidra, they have meditations, Mm -hmm. they have their sound bowls. So, allowing for a combination of all those modalities within a yoga class sparks mm-hmm. something new and adds a little, um, a little bit more to deepening that spirituality for me. Mm-hmm. So once, you know, I kind of notice, you know, yoga is not to work out. Yoga is not mm-hmm. to lose weight. Not for me anyway. Yoga right. is a spiritual connection. Yoga is quiet your mind, listen to your body, feel your breath, um, notice. Uh, yeah, so that, it sounds like that, that changed everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds like that really opened up your whole spiritual practice. So, and it totally you know what? Did. I I see that we're at the the break time. So let's take our break, and then when we come back, because I want to talk about the psychic mediumship that work that you do. So, guys, stay tuned, and we'll be back exactly. in just a few minutes. Conscious media for conscious minds. Ohm times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. The rainbow is God's promise of hope for you and me. And though the clouds hang heavy and the sun we cannot see, we know above the dark clouds that fill the stormy sky, hope's rainbow will come shining through when the clouds have drifted by. 
Teresa Caprio is the president and founder of Rainbow Guardian Inc., a nonprofit 501c3 serving the intellectually challenged slash developmentally disabled, including autism. Teresa started the foundation in 1995 so she could help make a better life for her intellectually challenged daughter. Her dream is that the Rainbow Guardian will provide the necessary tools and education to help the public understand the special needs population because it's often discarded in mainstream society. To find out more or make a donation and support, please go to www.rainbowguardian.org. Rainbow Guardian's special mission is to see these unique people live a happy, full life and have a future of liberty and equality. Welcome back. And if you're just joining me, I have Bonnie D'Angelo on and we're talking about all things magical. She is a metaphysical practitioner. So Bonnie, um, I want to talk mm -hmm. about people love this people. I mean, I, I don't think I truthfully, I can't think of anybody that <laughs> any of my friends that haven't been to a psychic truthfully <laughs> by now, you know? So, so let's talk about your psychic mediumship. Did you always, were you always psychic like as a kid and you just weren't really aware that you were like, how did that develop? So I am not aware and I don't remember if as a child I had any abilities. Um, mm -hmm. I just know that you you know the little the little um, gut instincts. So mm -hmm. you know you you're like I knew that I should have done mm -hmm. it that way. I, I've had that you know throughout my life, um, and it wasn't until I took an online course uh, while I was working from home during COVID. Cause you know, I'm not working cause I'm, I'm on the computer at home. So I'm like, right. what can I do instead of work? But, um, so I found this and I stumbled upon it and I'm not even kidding you with in a two days, two or three days, mm -hmm. things started happening more. Oh, Intuition was you. opening up. Mm -hmm. Um, just the act of, you know, saying, okay, I'm open to taking this course. It mm -hmm. opened me up for, um, for visuals, for, um, for knowings, for dreams. I think it started in dreams where I would be, I would wake up in a, in a, in the night and I would record. I'm the, I, I got to record this. I got to record this. And I'm one of the things that, and I'm just going to share one of the things that I dreamt about was getting a black dog, um, oh. having someone offer me a black dog. And the next day a trainer said, I have a black dog that's available. <laughs> so I'm like, Oh, huh, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. So I kind of just, you know, kept a journal. Um, so things would come in that way. And then I started noticing that I wouldn't even be asleep. I would be in that, you know, in, in mm -hmm. a state where you're very mellow. I'm yes. not asleep. I'm not dreaming. And then visuals pop up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Whoa, what was that? And yeah. what was that? And so that's kind of how it started, um, trickling in, just trickle and trickling and trickling in. Um, and then, um, oh, I've always loved tarot cards. I've, I mm -hmm. probably have 25 decks. And every time I got a new <laughs> one, my husband was like, do you need any more cards? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, I'll use, I do. I'll use them all. <laughs> so, um, so I've always, you know, th that's been going on for a long time with the, the tarot. And I was just, you know, I'm like, I'm going to dive in. So I, I dove in, I, and I read tarot very differently. I, it's, um, you know, each of the tarot have meaning. Um, sometimes I read it as the meaning of the tarot, but sometimes the pictures speak to me more. Sometimes I, I am intuitively sensing something that, that I will talk about or, or, you know, share. Um, so it just kind of happened like, and a slow trickling kind of mm -hmm. way. Yeah. yeah. And when I opened, when I opened my business, I, I started doing readings um, for okay. the people. Yeah. yeah. So people come to you and they can, they can get readings. So now mediumship yep. is a little different. Now mediumship mm -hmm. is um, when you're connecting with loved ones or spirits on the other side. So correct. 
Okay. I mean, that's, yeah, because there are some psychics that aren't, aren't, don't do any kind of mediumship. So how did, mm -hmm. how does that work for you? Like, did, did, were you reading up for a client and then all of a sudden, like you started getting like messages and you knew they were from spirit? <laughs> Cause that's a very specific um, right. uh, thing that people do. Yeah. And I've heard that any of us can do it if we're willing to tap in, really tap into it and study and practice and practice that kind oh, of work. Most mm -hmm. definitely, most definitely. Anyone who wants to put in the work to practice, to be open, can definitely, um, go into that, um, into that realm. The way it happened for me though, um, uh, we had some loss, um, that happened and it, it was, you know, it, it, it was again it, during my time when I was not sleeping, but awake in the middle of the night Yeah, where the loved ones that we lost would, would come to me mm. and I would, I would Feel their energy. No, just, I would, just quickly, yeah. let me just, just stop you there. When you said they came sure. to you, were you dreaming and had a visitation or were you awake and had the visitation? I was, I was awake. Okay. Um, I know I, yep. I was in bed. My eyes were closed. You know, that, mm -hmm. that time when yeah. mm -hmm. there's, it's stillness, it's quiet. Um, I would put the intention out too. Um, mm -hmm. I'm open if, if there's any messages, I would talk to my guides, you know, yeah, I wake up in the middle of the night for whatever reason. I'm like, okay, I'm awake. So if, if, if you want to, you know, share with me anything, if there's anything I need to know, I'm mm -hmm. open to hearing. Um, and that's when, when I would get those visits from our loved ones. Um, and it wasn't happening every night. It was just, sure. you know, I was like, whoa. And I had an experience and I told mm -hmm. my husband and there was another experience that he had with somebody else. And it lined up where the message was, you know, relatable. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, interesting. So I kind of dove into more practice sessions with that. And, um, and then I, I'm, I'm actually in a mentorship program right now. So I'm really still developing mm -hmm. the mentorship or the mediumship is fairly new. Yeah. I've been practicing that for about a, about two years. Mm -hmm. So I'm still really new in the scheme of things, yeah. um, but I still get the visits. I still practice. I do mediumship uh, for clients. And sometimes, yes, during a tarot card reading, mm -hmm. um, I do have uh, loved ones that come through. So I have a couple cards within my deck that were when they come through, when, when they're chosen or when they come in a reading, I immediately know that a loved one's visiting. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of nice. It, it, yeah, it's, um, it is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of us, they, you know, people want to see a medium because, mm -hmm. well, it's, you know, it's loss, it's grief, it's, yeah. it's well, maybe some unfinished business or or something unknown. And I really, you know, I I strive to be, you know, the person who can provide guidance and provide, you know, the messages. And and when that happens for me. And I see the joy, the love, the, the, the you know, the, the feeling that it brings to my sitter. That's what I, right. that's, that's why I do this. I, yeah. I, you know, I want people to, to be able to know that their loved ones are with them all the time and, and, you know, giving the evidence that they're there, it just really brings a whole new level for them. Yeah, no, I, it, it's so fascinating now. Um, Cause I've, my sister passed away a year ago and actually it's going to be a year, June 25th. Exactly. And I've had two visit, I've two visitation dreams, but I was asleep, mm -hmm. but they, mm -hmm. I know they were visitations different. They were different from dreams. That's all I can say. And it just brought me so much comfort because I have a lot of faith in knowing that there's more mm -hmm than meets the eye here on this planet. Like I'm not one of those people that think, okay, we die and that's it. No, that's not where I am at. And I've right. had proof of that, visual proof, auditory proof, experiences. So mm -hmm. it, it does, it brings a lot of comfort. So when you're doing, um, when you're talking with a client and they want to connect with a loved one, like how does it happen? I know everybody's different. Some people will hear mm -hmm. things. Some people will just get a picture in their head and they'll ask the person like, does this make sense to you? This is what I'm seeing. Like, how does it work for you? 
Um, yeah, that pretty much um, sounds about right. I, I stay quiet. I ask mm-hmm. for our loved ones to come close. And I just say what I see, feel, and hear. Um, okay. So, like you said, I could get a visual or or mm-hmm. something that I'm like, okay, so why is that? And, I, and I'll say it. I'll say, I see an orange. I don't know if oranges mean anything. Oh, they owned an orange grove or, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. so I, I do see, I get, um, I get sensations in my body sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also, I'll hear my own voice. So for me, that's hearing spirit. Um, Mm -hmm. so that comes through sometimes and, and sometimes it's just the knowing. Sometimes it's just like, I, I know there's something important about a lion, you know? Um, and for me, when I, when I do readings, it's such a puzzle for me. But mm-hmm. the sitters can take that information and they're like, oh, my gosh, that totally means something to me. Yeah. And um, it's in, in every client's different. So, mm-hmm. yeah, every time I do a reading, it's different. It, it's, it's quite am- amazing how spirit works through you. Yeah. You, know? you just never know how it's going to come through. Are you now getting, because I've heard this from other people who do mediumship, <clears throat> mm-hmm. that once the light's turned on, like from the other side, <laughs> I know this sounds so kooky, but <laughs> like from the other side, like they're like, oh, there's another one who can connect with us. And it's like, they, you get bombarded. <laughs> so where you have um, to like sort of shut it, like you have to be like, you know, you have to put like a do not disturb on yourself. <laughs> Well, what what I do, and I haven't had that problem with the bombarding and mm-hmm. and the feeling of of um, information coming through. I do a protection um, okay for myself, so I do that twice a day more if I'm doing readings. Whereas, mm-hmm. like I ground, I clear, and then I add a bubble of protection around me, and only that is meant for me at this moment is allowed to come and affect me. Got it. Right. Um, and then when I do readings, I am open and I, I pretty much um, put a bubble around me in the sitter so that our energies are, um, are there and, yeah. and work with that energy only, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes total sense. Yeah. It, it makes total sense. It's so interesting. I mean, and again, that is spell, another spell. We're spell casting. People don't realize yeah. that you're, you're spell casting all the time. You just don't realize how you're doing it, but you really are, you know, and it's like, Oh, that's so weird. I'm looking at my, uh, light coming out of my bathroom and it's blinking mm-hmm. right now. Okay. My, yes. my, yeah. I wonder if that's my sister. That's so crazy. It just that's started so blinking. Cool. Yeah, because I was just talking about her. And I was talking to her this morning when I was in the shower. And that's just so weird that it's just happening as I'm talking to you about this. Um, I know, because we want it to be like that show, Ghosts, right? Like where the girl sees yep. the ghost and, and has like a regular conversation with them like you and I. And it just isn't. It's not how it works yeah. from what I understand. That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not how it works for me and for mm-hmm. those that I've already uh, that I've spoken to anyway. Yeah. I have met one person who does see um apparitions Spirit. like um mm. blurs and and um yeah. fog and and cloud type stuff. Um Oh, interesting. But yeah. 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 yeah, I don't think and, I would want to see it like that. I think that would scare me. Like, I want to see them yeah, as I knew I them, or I would right. rather get pictures in my head or hear, <laughs> hear messages, because that would freak me out. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Yeah, totally. Oh, that's, that's so, so cool. Funny. So do you, do, you, do, you, do you do a lot of this stuff now, since you've opened up all to this to your friends and family now, that this is the new work that you're doing? Are they always asking yeah. you? <laughs> I do have family. Can you do a reading for me? Can you do a reading for me? Sure. Um, uh, I have a hard time reading for people I know. Of course. Um, and, but I, I have tried, and it seems to be accurate. Um, I haven't done a mediumship reading for people I know. I've done tarot for the people I know, my sister, my mom, my, um, mm-hmm. my, um, my daughter, and other people. Um, but as far as mediumship, I, I've done a reading for one lady. I don't know her backstory, so it, mm-hmm. it was okay mm-hmm. for me. So I didn't know anybody from her past life, uh, past, right. which, which seems to work. But when I know something, it kind of dampens um, and my mind gets in the way. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Which, you know, happens yeah. during regular readings anyway. Sometimes I'm like, is this my mind? Is this my mind? I try mm-hmm. to figure out that. And if I'm saying this is my mind, then I, I know it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a very good friend who's psychic, a psychic, and she's, into, she's doing mediumship now also. Um, uh-huh. But she's, uh, yeah, she never reads me. Um um, because she knows so much about me, you know, but what's uh-huh. so crazy is she always calls or sends me a message. Like when I'm thinking about something or doing something that's like out of the blue and it freaks me out. And <laughs> I'm always like, yeah. you're, how do you know this? And she just laughs, you know, but yeah, she does that too. <laughs> she doesn't read for people she knows psychically because mm-hmm. she knows too much. You don't know if it's your own stuff that you already know getting in the way. So that's why it's better exactly. to read for a stranger who you don't know that's so I love it I I just love all this stuff so much I always have now um do you do you when we're talking about spell casting and everything do you consider yourself a witch do you consider yourself I do I do I it's funny because my sister she's like you gotta meet my sister she's a witch (laughs) I'm like be careful (laughs) who you say that to (laughs) yeah I'm like yeah yeah, I kind of consider myself a little witty and yeah and a little weird and a little, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, I do. I consider I think myself a witch, too. I do, too. Uh, yeah, I do, too. Yeah. yeah. You so know, is there a certain kind of witch that I know there's people that are like, well, they call themselves different witches, like, you know, um, summer witch or, you know, moon witch. Like, they work with certain, there's certain things that they resonate with. Do you call yourself a certain kind of a witch or a certain kind of practice you well, like to do? A couple things. Um, I... I bring kind of like a sense of um, the elements. So I mm-hmm. feel like I work more with the elements. I love earth, air, fire, water. And mm. I say good morning to the directions like of the mm. east. Oh, you do. Oh, south, that's good west, practice. north. And um, so I say good morning. I ask for guidance for the day. And then I mm-hmm. say good night. Um, thank you for guiding me. Um, so elements are... Um, very close and near and dear to my heart. I love working with the elements. Also, I bring a little, um, secretly a little witchcraft into uh, my yoga classes, but mm-hmm. not really, you know, more so, sp- I will call it spiritual. Um, mm-hmm. My yoga practice when I teach is um, more spiritual than getting into a pretzel shape. So that's kind of like, yeah. um, I actually bought a book not too long ago called The Yoga Witch. So um, yeah. I kind of bring that in a little bit too. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I bring that into my photography. When I'm taking the photos of that's the manifesting, awesome. the cards, that's that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a ritual. Yeah. That's where I love to do it. But I think I'm like the elements too. I like, I like mm-hmm. to work and I like to, uh, I'm very right now, I think it changes as we change. There was a time where it was I was more connected to the water and the ocean and now I'm more connected to the earth and the, and, yes, yes. and the trees and stuff. So whatever that is that I need to do right now, I'm just kind of going with it. You know, you go with what. That's what perfect. Your, yeah. Yeah. What everything you know, what your body's telling you, what your intuition is telling you. So it's well, really, our, really interesting stuff. <laughs> yeah, our body it contains all the um, elements. So um, earth, that's our our body, our bones, our muscle. Um, mm-hmm. It's our groundedness. And then we have mm-hmm. air. That's our breath. That's yeah. our thoughts. Um, for fire, that's our drive, our passion, our, you know, our willpower and our, you know, our fierceness. Mm-hmm. Um, we got water, which is our emotion. It's our blood. It's our tears. It's, it's within us. Um, and which one did I miss? I don't think I missed any. I don't but, think you missed um, any. Yeah. Right and then not. we have... <laughs> Spirit. I, I mean, we are spirit. all spirit. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, are you, do you also connect with people, clients who come to you? Do you do any past life readings? I know that some people are like, they do that also. That's part of their, they can see past lives or they get impressions or whatever. I don't know if you do that work also. It is not something that's coming to me right now. I'm not going to say it, it never will. It right. might mm-hmm. at some point if it's something that I meant to provide. Um, I'm open to, you know, anything. And uh, the um, Akashic Records are something that I'm very interested in as well, but I'm not 
Um, I'm not versed in it. Astrology is something that I really want to get into as well. There's, Mm -hmm. there's so many different things that, you know, I, I'm just, I interested in, I'm just not, um, you know, it's not my thing just yet. Just, just yeah. Never know. yeah, yeah, no, I know there was, yeah. I've had a guest on who that's part of what she does. She reads people's mm-hmm. um, Akashic records. She gets access to it if it's, if they, if the person gives permission and then the person's higher self who guards whatever, who's in charge of the Akashic records mm-hmm. gives permission when she's in that, you know, wherever she, wherever it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to me, I, it's like, yep, wherever exactly. you go, wherever you go for that. <laughs> it's uh, cool stuff. The, yeah. yeah. It's you just open the curtain. There it is. Yeah. There it is. There it is. So now how do you see clients? Um, you said you had a mobile, you started talking about your crystals, your mobile shop. Where do you, do you, do you see clients only a person or do you do stuff like if somebody is listening and lives somewhere else and they want to reach out to you, do you do that work too? Yeah. Online? Yeah. So okay. I do, I, I do online work. I do, I do Zoom calls. I, I can do Zoom for card readings. I've done Zoom for mediumship readings. Um, and I do um, have a location, physical location, where I can offer in person if someone's interested in person. So, yeah, it's flexible. So it works either way. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So do you have a shop or do you go to, like, do you go to fairs and those kind of things mm-hmm. with your, with your, you take your shop with you or people have to come to you? I take my um, my mobile trailer. I set up like a shop. I'm at uh, farmers markets and other pop up mm. events that come through. Um, but I also have um, I call it my Zen Den. It's my little mm. safe space um, mm. just near my home where I can have. I do healings in here, so um, I do readings. Um, I can do yoga, a private yoga session if someone's looking for private yoga, private sound bowls. Um, all that I can do here in, in this physical location. And the readings, of course, I can do online. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, for those of you guys listening, if you're, you know, if it's resonating with you, um, I guess they can contact you through spellboundmystics.com, right? And then they can Correct. connect yep. with you if they want to do something. Yeah. No, I find all of this stuff um, is, like, totally my jam. Like, I'm always open <laughs> to... What people, you know, I've had some really strange experiences that I can't explain and I've shared them with some people. I've shared them on the Mm -hmm. air, you know, people are just like, I'm not embarrassed, you know, anymore. Like I don't hide it anymore. And it's just stuff that is not explainable in the way that, you know, we're used to explaining things by, oh, I have to see it. I have to be able to touch it. I have to be able to hear it, you know, and that's what makes it true. And I'm finding that that isn't necessarily true, that there's Mm -hmm. many things yet to be discovered and just being open to it allows it to come into your experience. I mean, that's personally how I found it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. And like I said, when I first started down this path, I was like, okay, keep it secret. I don't know what everyone's thinking, but now I'm just like, (laughs) if you don't like it, don't listen to me. (laughs) (laughs) If it doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. That's okay. And I, I say to myself, I wish I knew what I know now when I was 20. Yeah. (sighs) Me too. Me too. too. (laughs) If only, you know, but yeah, Yeah, I, Go ahead. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, I just pulled a couple cards. Did you want me to go ahead and kind of give you a, just a quick little reading? Yeah, here? I would I'll love that. Through? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, seven of pentacles and the six of swords. Okay. So, and like I said, sometimes I read tarot style, sometimes it's mm-hmm. intuitive. So it might okay. not even relate to tarot, but let me just think in here for a second. So <clears throat> there's... um. There's a feeling of um, a relief. So, and I think this is going to the general um, people who are listening to this. So okay. it's, it's, a, it's a, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't even remember the word I was looking for. But um, anyway, okay, I'm going to continue. Uh-huh. Um, okay. There's um, a relief of something old. So I feel like. Okay releasing something old and with this release of the old and the and the renewal that's coming in those goals that you have um um 
planted over the last few months Mm -hmm. are coming through and growing so strong. So um, just keep going and keep doing the things and all the hard work that you put into whatever it is you're working on, Mm -hmm. it's a, it's about to flourish. If it hasn't already, it's about to flourish. I see that more care is, is needed, more, mm. more, um, nurturing, um, stay, mm. stay the course, stay the okay. course. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's great. Message. Oh, that's yeah. great. No. And that's, so that's like a general message that you're getting like for the overwhelming, for people who kind of are tuned in to us right now. Like a lot of us are sort yeah. of in that same space. No, I love that. Thank okay. you so much, okay. Bonnie. That's, that's really, <laughs> it's really good stuff. People stay the course, right? Okay. <laughs> it's, yep. coming. Exactly. it's coming. It's um, coming. It's coming. Yeah. So um, the best way people to find you, tell everybody. Just go to the website, Spellbound Myth poundfoundmystics.com and my um, contact information is there. You can reach out through through the website. Okay. And we can find you on social media if we go through your website. Correct. We can get, all right. Thank yes. you so much. It was such a pleasure talking with you today, Bonnie. All right, guys, check her out. Um, yeah, please check her out and see all the cool stuff that she's doing. Thank you for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. And I'm wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with joy, abundance, and love. Peace. <laughs>